Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuits. I'm here to ask an answer with the help of someone very close and dear to me who is also incredibly violent and very condescending at times. A simple question. <laughs> what? 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 I was guessing. No. The chinchilla likes me? me. More than you. Chinchilla bites you. She doesn't like you at all. No, she doesn't like me. No. She senses something within you, a darkness brewing inside. Wow. <laughs> This is a great WTF is already. That's a fantastic intro. It's getting getting pretty heavy. Whatever the case, it is time, ladies and gentlemen, it is time. WTF is Sim City. A good question. It is another in the long series of games that EA absolutely flat out refuses to call Sim City or anything five or six or number because for some reason the current trend in gaming is to take it back to the roots by naming it the same thing as the first game. It's exactly like the first game in every possible way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Except not remotely in any respect. And yet they're doing it. Hey, you know they're doing it with Generals 2? They've just renamed it Command & Conquer. Is that oh nowhere? Oh my god. <laughs> so, let's see. Command & Conquer, Devil May Cry, Tomb Raider, Sim City, and there's a bunch of others that don't come to mind. And, oh god, it's annoying. But whatever the case, this is... <laughs> The latest SimCity. This is basically SimCity 5, if you don't count societies, which I am informed angrily was not made by Maxis. Therefore, it doesn't count. <laughs> exactly. So, it, it, it does not, in fact, count. No. Indeed. So, this is SimCity, and this is the press beta. I can tell you that it's the press beta, because we can look at the current cities that are available and notice some rather amusing things. Oh, look, it's Ars Technica's region which I believe, yes, features their Shack News account, their Ask Technica account, as well as a couple of others. There's a Kotaku one somewhere, if I recall correctly. And there's a general review copies. There's one from The Verge, Destructoids one, which actually has GameSpot in it as well. Apparently there's three Destructoid guys that got review code for this. How greedy. Then a couple of IGN guys out of nowhere. So this, this is very much the, the press beta, which is essentially their review build. Oh, there's Polygon. I like them. Polygon's a good site. PC Gamer have three people. Although he's in Veronicaville is apparently forever alone. How unfortunate. <laughs> Well, whatever the case. The, so, the way that you join or create a game within this new SimCity is you do it online. And you either join an existing region, or you resume one that you've currently done, or you create one. Now, this is what creating one looks like. You have the option of eight different regions, all the way up to a large region with 16 potential cities and four potential great works, which are rather large, crazy, and expensive things you can build. There's also some really, really small ones. This is probably designed for just playing on your own here. The one that we're currently playing is, I think, well, are we doing Whitewater Valley? I believe so. Yeah, pretty sure it's Whitewater Valley, which is a five-city region. It's got mountains. It's got a nice river in the middle of it. And, uh, the, you know, those are the ones that are currently available. I'd imagine they'll probably do a few more. So let's, I'm going to set up a region just to show you how it works. And then we're going to go into the region that we have. So you name your region. Lol Kotaku. <laughs> probably misspelled that. You can have public region or private region. Private region, as you imagine, is invitation only. You can also enable sandbox mode. This means that you can get access to cheats, but you don't get achievements, challenges, and leaderboards. Oh, no. And you can build all the buildings, and there's no random disasters. Taking the game out of the game. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> but some people like that kind of stuff. And, you know, it's a single-player game, technically, so you shouldn't be judging them for their play style. Oh, but no. We must make it multiplayer so we can justify our perpetual online presence. Oh. Some, yeah, I imagine that's exactly how they sounded when they came up with it. That's That definitely sounds like Maxis to me. So when you create a region, no, you then get to pick Maxis, it. not Maxis EA. You can't no. blame this all on them. I'm blaming it on Maxis. They let it happen. They no. let it happen. They were asking for it. They were begging for it. Developers having their arms twisted? Yeah, that never happens ever. No, of course not. Absolutely. We've never experienced that in our lifetime. <laughs> Whatever the case, yes. Once you've created your region, you then pick a square. And the squares, I, they do slightly vary in size. I believe the maximum size is two kilometers square, which is not particularly large, I have to say. And these cities all kind of interconnect by road and rail systems, which are already placed within the region. So, 
there is this rail system which is in yellow here no that's the road i'm an idiot and can't read basic legends and then there's the white that's the white is the rail and the yellow is the road the road is classified as a highway this is pretty much required you need a highway in your region to allow for intercity commerce commuting and everything else so with that in mind, before we go into it, we'll have another look at the sort of multiplayer features here, and then we'll demonstrate exactly how they apply to the game. And we will talk about the big three bugbears. They will be talked about here in great detail, I think. Now you'll notice here that the city log gives you some information here. Most of this is actually useless. It's like, join Fart Town and play with others. Yeah, thanks. That sounds wonderful. That's, let's not do that. If you go to Sim City World, you'll notice that there are certain leaderboards here. This is Chris, who is clearly not doing his job, I might add, because he's far too busy with building bunches of cities. He's got a city with 132,000 people in it. That's insane. I could even... I think I can actually join his game as well to check that out. No, I think it's invite only. Um, oh, I'm, I'm not I'm playing in. on that region with him, I think. Oh, no, I can visit it. Okay, I'm, yeah. Yeah, I guess is maybe Is that the he... one I'm also on or not? Yeah, you're in there too. This, oh, is, okay. this is a region you were playing with him. You actually have played a lot more of this game, which is why I brought you along. Oh, thanks. I thought it was because you respected my opinion in gaming and uh, you maybe got a little bit lonely, but okay. <laughs> but I love you. I love you too. <laughs> it, yeah, it was mostly because I needed the llamas, but... <laughs> Alright, yeah, this is this is a look at Chris's city. It's it's kind of hardcore. Well, it was hardcore until... Wow, he has traffic problems. Yeah, his city sucks. This is rubbish. <laughs> absolute, absolute dreck. It was planned and designed by a monkey. I'm actually kind of mad at that region. That is the region that uh, bugged out on me. Um, like everything was fine. My economy was great. Traffic was no problem. Everyone had jobs. Everyone was so happy. I had tons of money. And then Godzilla showed up and killed it. And like in one fail swoop, I, I just, all I did was pause my police department for two seconds. And then all of a sudden I'm like 10,000 simoleons per hour in debt. Eh, and I, that I got happens. so mad. <laughs> Sometimes there is Godzilla. His yes. traffic system sucks. His public tra he has no public transportation at all. This is this is junk. This city's terrible. Mine is way better than <laughs> Doesn't this. Doesn't he have a ferry though? I'm I thought that a ferry? in that region no, he had a ferry. No, not in this one. He's not even near the water. Okay, is it the one that he has three cities? Yeah, he seems to have a lot of them. This is right. the one that he's got 132,000 people in this one. Yeah. He's got a lot of money, don't, you know, but this looks like the worst place to live ever. It's perpetual <laughs> gridlock everywhere. It is horrible. Welcome to London. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty much London, love. Only you can't actually have underground rail in this one, which is a little bit disappointing. But yeah, that is actually disappointing. Mm -hmm. I, I would kind let's... of expect that to be a thing. Yeah, you'd think so. Anyway, let's let's jump out of this. Let's jump into our region, and then we can start to demonstrate the game, and we can talk about the big three bugbears. There are okay. three bugbears. There are three entire bugbears. One of them might be <laughs> dire, but I'm oh, sure no. they drop fantastic loot, so we should be good. <laughs> We are now entering Glorious Bees, which is my commerce-based city. This is the one I've been building up. I'm going to jump over to my other one, though, to, to show you that, because that one's way more well-developed than this one. So we'll jump out of this. So wh when we jump out of this, we can show you what the region view actually looks like. So you click that button, you see the region view. This region has five different areas, plus your Great Works building site. And you can take pretty much any of them, or all of them yourself, or you can invite other people to take them as well or if it's an open game people can just hop in at any time and these things pretty much run perpetually they don't run while we're offline do they like if um, no one's no. playing um that's right so i guess what is that asynchronous asynchronous <laughs> yes thank you i i never know mm -hmm. what that word is it's just words yeah Gosh, it, words. it is very much kind of asynchronous yes. now the, these cities are all linked together by the highway and by the rail system and commerce and tourism and things like that can also be done by ferry i think as well in certain scenarios but it seems like the, the best way to commute is via the highway just as you would imagine in america and via the use of the rail system now what you can do in this is manage a lot of different things and get a lot of different pieces of information because in this version of the game neighboring cities are a lot more important than they were in previous sim city games yeah um as far as you know things that you can trade resources wise sure because there are more resources to be had in this game versus mm -hmm. previous sim cities 
before it was just kind of like, oh, well, let's just, uh, you know, share water or electricity. But in this game, it's uh, it's a bit different. Yeah, it is a little bit more crazy. You can do stuff like share fire vehicles and garbage disposal. I mean, what I'm looking at right here is the you ability to... You could do to... garbage disposal before. Oh, Just... yes, yes, of course. You're right. You're absolutely yeah. right. I, I remember that. It's been <laughs> so, so long since I played that. So, want you to take their garbage. <laughs> yes, you could do that. But here, you kind of do it more directly. And it seems like you've got more uh, more ability to control it. Like I say, if I need power, I just I go to this menu and I see who's got power available, then I buy it. If I need water, if I need sewage treatment, if I need access to fire vehicles, things like that, or police presence, you can do that. Or even medical stuff like the wellness van and ambulances. You can volunteer these to access the region. And these will actually go from city to city and they will interact there. So if there's a fire and my fire department can't respond, yours might, assuming mm -hmm. that you've volunteered service for it. I'll never volunteer service. No, you won't because you're a horrible capitalist monster. <laughs> now, the the rest of it is kind of about constructing the great works. Like, for instance, if I want to build a great work here, there's... This is, bear in mind, this is the press beta, not re necessarily representative of the final product, blah, 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 blah. If I want to build an arcology, which of course is very much a iconic structure within the SimCity franchise, we could do that. It would cost a million simoleons. It also requires resources. This is new to SimCity, if I recall correctly. Yes? Believe so. Yes. I, 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 like, I don't... I, I always hate making a definitive answer because it's just, it's been it's so It's really long. hard to remember. It's been, know. it's been a long time. It is. I mean, SimCity franchise has been running for like two decades, maybe even longer than that. It's very hard to remember what was in them, but this time around, what they've done with the game is they have actually made resources beyond money. Yeah, And you might say, oh, well, there's resources before like power and water. Yes, you're right, but these are physical goods that are actually produced via a supply chain. Yeah, So if I want to build the Arcology, I need a lot of money, but I also need a lot of metal, a lot of alloy, and 60,000 crates of TVs. That's all. <laughs> Only 60,000 crates of TVs. Everything will just, that's, that's all you need to build an arcology. But the question is, how do you get metal? Well, you don't just build a metal mine. It doesn't work that way. You've got to build an ore mine, which then has to send metal to a smelting plant to be processed. And then you have to get the storage in order to actually get that much metal and be able to use it to build the great work. Or you could sell that metal. Alternatively, your smelting plant could be making alloy instead of that and a bunch of other stuff. This is or not... Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> or you could make a recycling plant, a recycling center, and you can basically take all your city's metal as it is and remanufacture that and use the metal locally using the functions in your trade depot. Or yes. you could sell it or you could import it using your trade depot. So technically, if you just need one resource, you could just pay and get that resource you can, sent yeah. to you as well. But, you know, obviously it's it's more beneficial for you to find as many ways to produce your own resources Make it to yourself. produce your own product as possible. Yeah, I'm looking at your recycling center right now, actually. And yeah, that's that's a big example of it. So what you're seeing here is a it's kind of a paradigm shift within SimCity, and it's actually moving the series more towards certain functions and systems and mechanics that exist in games like Anno or the Settlers. And that's the notion of the supply chain, that raw materials must be gathered, then processed into something else, which could then be processed into something else. It's not as crazy as Anno is, but it's kind of damn close. Like, you can you can do some pretty advanced stuff. And I'll show you via this. The, this is the specialization screen. Now, cities this time around can be specialized in a variety of different ways. And usually they're done by constructing certain buildings. Now, I obviously can't do it here, so it's kind of dumb for me to even show you. So I'll jump out of this city and jump into mine, where you'll be able to actually see that. So, well, I guess we're doing it in Glorious Bees. That'll work too. But the point of the specialization screen is that you can build a lot of stuff which pushes your city in a particular direction. And more often than not, that's that stuff's kind of mutually exclusive. Like when you build an add-on for a particular building that sends you in one direction, you can't also build the other one. So you've got to decide what it is you want your city to do. You can't? It depends. The Some of the HQs, apparently, you can't do that on. Really? Yes. There, there aren't all that many. I believe the trade, if I'm... I... Are you sure? May, I, may, I could be wrong. <laughs> I made a petroleum HQ as mm -hmm. well as a trade HQ in the same city yeah, yeah, about yeah. two cities ago. Yeah, because they, they actually work with each other. 
Well, right. Let, let, let me just check whether or not I'm right here. I could be completely wrong. And I also built an electronics HQ in that same city because I was uh, producing the um, computer chips or the processor chips. Mm -hmm. So I was able to put all of those in there. I thought that that was the way things were when I first started SimCity as well, because I actually didn't get to the um, specialization section until until after I'd already built like my first two cities, because I just wanted to kind of get the idea of what the, the game in its um, kind of simpler form, I guess, mm -hmm. was like. And then the the next city after, I think, Yeah, it seems two. like I think you're right, actually, by the looks of it. the yeah. I could get an engineering division for uh -huh. my Metals HQ, if I was able to approve it, I would need an advanced coal mine to do that. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. It looks like I can get that. So you, yeah, you can do it, which is kind of weird considering they class it as specializations. However, you're talking about the the kind of cost that these things would do. So what you're seeing here are these very costly buildings. And if we go to specializations, we can see some of the stuff here. Like, say, a processor factory. You wanted to make processors. And you needed stuff in order to do that. You need alloy and plastic to make it. And you would need five medium tech industry buildings in order to even unlock it in the first place. And That's then you'd have difficult. to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is in my city. We don't do that stuff. We don't yeah. do this tech nonsense. No, 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 no. It's not so much about tech, it's just medium, it's density. Mm -hmm. uh, so you get a community college, you build medium density streets, and boom, they will make themselves. That, that's not the hard part. The hard part is actually getting enough resources to keep your trade up when you're making the processors at that point. You can have one recycling facility that takes in plastic and alloy and crunches them down and reproduces them to make your um, processors, but even one recycling center in one entire town, even though the entire town is covered and the entire town is recycling, it's still not enough. It's not enough to fill up all four bins of a trade center at this point. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it, it kind of is specialization in the way that you kind of, you really kind of have to want one thing in order to throw down that much money and expect it to be an efficient operation. If yeah. the, if the, especially with the amount of space that we have per city right now as it is in its current form. Indeed. Which gets us onto the first bugbear. Oh, no. <laughs> this guy is not the leader of the bugbears, but he is an active part in their operations, okay? The first bugbear is city size. So these cities, as you can probably see, this is the kind of space we've got. I believe there are some regions that are slightly larger than this, but not by much. And I was reading an interview today that said that the these were two square kilometers, which is not that large in comparison to previous games. Now, what this also means is that you're going to have to be pretty damn efficient. This was my first ever city. Needless to say, it's not that efficient, but it's pretty good. This city is very much in profit, and you said, oh, well, you're losing $4,000 an hour, but I'm not, though. And the reason I'm not losing $4,000 an hour is because of all of these transactions. I am actually selling tons of stuff. And you'll notice, oh, well, that's just minus as well. That's because I gave a bunch of money to my other city. So I'm selling bouts of metal for 29,000 alloys for 37,000 simoleons. And these are regular shipments that are going out through my trade port. So I'm still making a lot of money in this city, even though my budget isn't balanced based on my taxes. My taxes are reasonably low. They're all at about 10%. And I'm running a lot of services that are costing a lot of money. I have huge amounts of transportation in this city. $6,500 is going out in transportation. But as a result, for the most part, I don't have a lot of gridlock. A little bit in the center of the town, but everything else is pretty good. I've got streetcars. I've got a really good bus service, which is essentially servicing the entire region right now. It is a regional bus terminal with a lot of buses and a lot of services going on. As you can see, I carry 3,700 or so passengers a day. It's pretty cool. So... That's the kind of thing that I can do here in this city, but size-wise, th that's where the specialization comes in, because, yeah, I could build all that stuff. I could say, right, I'm going to make processors now. It's like, yeah, but how am I going to do that? With, with Where am I going to put the processing factory? Where am I going to put the industries which will allow me to get the plastic? I could buy the plastic from the global market using the trade port, and this is how you do that. you got to manage deliveries. You basically build a storage center for various different resources. And then I can, here I'm exporting, I can import, I can use locally. 
like you can do all this crazy trade stuff, but I won't have the space to do all that thing, all that stuff. So this town very much is we mine here and then we export. Yeah, we make the ore and we use the coal as well to make metal and alloys. And I also I drill a lot of oil here as well, and I just sell that oil. And I could have a petroleum factory, and I could be making petrol, but once again, do I have the space? Do I have the capacity? Do I even have the skilled workers to do it? Currently, my nuclear plant needs skilled workers. I don't have enough skilled workers in my city. So there's a, there's a lot of stuff you need to do there. Now, this size thing, you've played a lot more of this than I have. So I have. what do you, yeah, what do you think as to the size of the cities? You've made, what, three, four cities now? Maybe even I more? I think this is probably like my... 10th oh 10th jesus maybe okay. again i i rage quit when i mean for me it's a very tedious um well it's not tedious i don't want to put it like that but i'm i'm very picky i am very i i, I ocd when i play sim games because to me they're very single player games this is what Naturally. you know i will spend my time on other people will see it as a time sink i see it as an activity <laughs> And I will sit down and okay. play it for hours and be very meticulous about everything. So, for me, no. The size is not adequate. Um, there's just... You can't take us from, like, SimCity 4, where, you know, you, you're you expanding from mountain regions all the way to oceans. And, and goodness, if, you know, you're, if your region isn't perfect, you can terraform it. To mm -hmm. make it yes. what you want. Exactly. You, and can't, this you, have you can't terraform in this game at all. No. Entirely. I mean, you, you can you can slightly... You Sometimes you can get away with pl plotting like a building. That's kind of a slight angle. It's like, no, we can sort build of. it here. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. And and then it'll push the earth down. But yeah, there aren't, there's no like steep grading. None of that. You can't continue to dig down until you reach water, you know, to you know, make an ocean or make a river or something like that. You can't do that. So mm -hmm. for me, yeah, the size is a problem. And it's just because it's it's a limitation for me. For someone who doesn't play the game just, you know, as a casual thing, this game could be over for me in less than an hour. So, you know, it's like, hey, I bought this game and it's awesome and it's from a franchise that I really enjoy and love. But after an hour, I will have built my city. It will be functioning, we hope. And for veterans of the, of the franchise, I honestly think that after an hour, they're going to be like, okay, well, now what do I do? Do I move on, make a, another city in the same region? You know, I, well, I, I foresee. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, and that's kind of what they're hoping for, I think, you know, and they're also hoping for, ooh, multiplayer. But, you know, honestly, I've played multiplayer, and it's not amazing fast. There's not a lot to it. There right? isn't. And, you know, I foresee that at some point I will end up having one of the 16, you know, uh, city regions that it will be on my own little private thing, and I will make every single one of those cities... You know, just, you know, to not really kill time, but to refine what I know about this game. And I'll have fun doing it, but not as much fun as I think I would if the cities actually interacted more with each other than what they do. Like the, I'm, I'm when you, kind of surprised that you said that, because like the interactivity between them seems to be more extreme than anything else in the series, right? Like, as far as sending resources from one city to another, if you own both cities, sure, you can send yourself money. You can, you know, obviously benefit from one city having more uh, garbage trucks, recycling trucks, you know, to the other. But in, in a sense, you get the feeling that it doesn't really matter because time is relevant only to the city that you're active in at that time. It's not like, oh, hey, I built this really successful city, and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to make this other really successful city. Well, the city that I just built, that's that that time is frozen. That, that thing is frozen in time as it is right then, and it's not going to continue to make more money. You know, when I go back to it, it's going to be the same as it was when I left yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's really, it's this weird idea, I guess, that they want everything to be interconnected and react 
to what's happening within the region. Like, stuff like the pollution that my city is causing, for instance, was yeah. blowing in the direction of yours right. and was actually causing you a few problems here and there. It and was. then I, my new city, which is very much a commercial center... Wow, that's a that's a pretty kick-ass factory they just built in my city. They that <laughs> is that commercial center is where a lot of my guys are going to do their shopping because my main city actually has very little commercial. It's got a little bit, but as you can see, Glorious Bees, the shopping capital of the world, <laughs> requires sh more shoppers and. I, I've been very, very cautious about adding more people to it. I just want enough people to be able to work at those stores, yeah? And mm -hmm. then I want everyone else to be coming in via the rail links, via the city buses, and eventually, once I put some touristy stuff in here, via the airport. I have an airport. I have it turned off right now because no one is coming. Apparently, you don't fly into a municipal airport to buy shoes. Who knew? <laughs> but a lot of my commercial stuff is still kind of small, so I'm in this weird problem, I, I suppose, with this city right now where... I need bigger and better shops to attract people in, but unfortunately I can't really do that because I don't have enough people coming in to begin with, so it's, it's a little bit of a problem. Also, I have a crime issue, which apparently I need to solve here, but <laughs> th that interaction is what they're kind of touting. This whole region thing is what they're touting, mm -hmm. and you can check all sorts of different pieces of information. Like, I turn on my mass transit, you can see where stuff is going. Like, all of my buses are driving across the city, and they're actually heading over between the two, because I've got a lot of bus stations and a lot of bus stops between my two cities here. There's where the ferry is right now, and there's the train station. There's a train station over this side as well that connects all of that up. That's where the train's going. It's going all the way around the region for some stupid reason. That's kind of a waste of time, but you can see all of that stuff and the way that these cities are interacting. And yet, as you pointed out, stuff kind of freezes when you're in one city unless someone else is playing the other city it forces multiplayer in my my just my opinion you know i think there are probably going to be some single player you know people who have played the franchise games in past who probably think oh well you know that's great because i don't want my city going into ruin while i'm off managing this other city well that's probably the reason they did it right well of course but at the same time you know and, and again it's just it's just me personally i i would see that as like part of the fun for it to be a challenge well it's where you have to hop between the different cities and maybe it brings up a warning that says something's yeah. going wrong here it, it's kind like of that. weird because there is a bit of that. Like, I get a message that says there's an arsonist coming from the other city. Yeah. But I guess that's not affecting stuff like basic things like budget and the m amount of money that's being made. Am mm -hmm. I right in thinking that if I'm in region view, and I'm going to turn to region view for a second, and I'm going to keep an eye on money. So currently, the the my uh, city with eyes is on 665,000 civilians. I'm going to turn the speed up a bit. And I'm going to see if that changes while I'm in region view and looking at it. So it's on 665.570. It should be ticking over pretty much every hour. I would hour. assume that it would tick because you don't have to reload it until you actually... Like, if you go from one city to a completely other city, then the game is forced to load that other city. Mm -hmm. And that's when time begins in that city. Yes. To my knowledge. I think you're right. I'm, I, we've just gone through two hours. Basically, like, the budget... Your stuff costs every hour. Yeah, you can notice there's even an amount of income an hour at the bottom there. As you can see, the amount of money this city has made has not changed. Because I'm not currently loaded into that city. So, while you do have interaction... It's almost the rest of the cities are actually frozen in time unless someone's playing them. And the argument you made about kind of forcing multiplayer is pretty valid because that comes on to the second bugbear. Oh no. <laughs> second bugbear has entered the building. He has a larger <laughs> club than the first bugbear. It's spiky. He has three kills to his name. He is dangerous. <laughs> Credit to tribe and yet not alpha leader as of yet. But he plots to make sure that that is the case. Second bugbear <laughs> is always on. DRM multiplayer requirement. Uh. <laughs> yeah, and that the, what you just said kind of touches on that. Yeah. What? He, so let, we're, we're kind of building this up in in blocks here, and mm -hmm. I want to get through all of this stuff before I talk about what's good about it. 
because there's a lot of good things about this. A lot. Okay, please do not think that we hate SimCity because we don't. No, we I actually love don't at all. This is really good. But I want to talk about these three things that are really concerning people because that's all the talk's been about over the last couple of months. So and that's the point that they're going to skip to in the video anyway. Yeah. They're gonna they're gonna look for time codes. They're like, okay, I don't want to hear any of this interacting husband wife crap. We'll, we'll just address you know the things that I'm worried about that I'm concerned about. Yeah, if you if all you want basically from this video is is it good or not, it's like well you're on the wrong channel. So <laughs> we're getting in depth. Okay, so let's think about what we've spoken about so far and how that kind of all gels together. I'm laughing at my buses right now. They're literally going around in this gigantic convoy. <laughs> for no apparent reason. There's some weird stuff. I, I was showing, I was showing guys the following an individual vehicle, which is something you can do in this game, like yeah, at street I know. level. Now, I really enjoy that part, actually. There's some pretty impressive simulation going on there, but also it gets a little bit derpy from time to time because the game has to cut corners. It's trying to simulate an entire city, so like a. a, a bus will teleport to the other side of the road or something along those lines if it can't figure out a way to turn around safely and so on and so forth and then you get these weird situations where it's nothing but buses following buses following buses all the time and weird stuff like that but again it's not really that important it's mostly cosmetic and it's just like the way that the simulation actually runs is real people go to real jobs and they get on buses and each car is going somewhere and everything is properly simulated. They called it Glass House, didn't they, if I recall correctly? I believe that's it was the Glass engine. Box. Glass that's, Box. That's the, glass uh, box, the new yeah. engine, which if I'm not completely mistaken, and I'm, I'm going to say that a lot because I am not a gaming expert. You know, I don't do this all that often. I just play the games. But I believe that's the same engine that they used for games like The Sims where you can track you know, certain things in a universe of sorts. Mm. I'm like, not sure. Certain I, things do happen as an I'm actual I'm pretty sure movement. I heard them say it was kind of newish, but it's probably based on that existing tech. So one way or the other, I guess it doesn't really matter. But the, the point is that things interact and everything kind of flows. Like you want to see flow. I can show you flow. That's the power flow. Yeah. This is bits of power actually move along the lines and they're, they're done so based on time. I can speed it up, as you can see. If there's a break in the power for some reason, then it will affect the rest of the chain, but it will do so in a logical way. The same with water. Yeah? This is how water flows. And something isn't going to have water until water actually reaches it. Same with sewage. Sewage is flowing all the way along here, over here to where I dump it out into the street, and yet I have people living right next to that. It's like you they want a cheap housing. You know what? what I love about that whole the bit you're just talking about is yeah. that when you plop down uh, a utility like sewage or or like electricity, it's actually closed. It's closed. It, if you don't have workers, it will stay closed. Yeah, it just doesn't work at all. It, yeah, you have to actually wait for someone to be hired at that place. So well, you quite literally have to wait for the person to drive there. Yeah, you have to wait for that person to get there, and yeah. then only then is your city powered again. So you know, I think that that brings a little additional flavor to the realism because yeah well it's a simulation isn't it yeah you know everything is actually simulated and everything flows together and that's the way that they built the game okay let's talk about the second bugbear then and funnily enough it actually links quite nicely into that as well and i'm gonna gonna put it all together let's talk about what we know so far about the design we know that cities are smaller we know that there is this kind of multiplayer dependence because you can only really play one city at a time and the other cities are frozen in time unless someone is playing them, which means that in order to be the most efficient region possible, you want one person on each city because then they're actually running, they're actually building, they're making more money. So if you need to send money outside to another person, you can do that easier. You can't really do that if all you're doing is running one, one set on your own because your city isn't making any money unless you're in it, right? So this is, we all know about all of this. So this always on thing is related to all of that. The reason that the game is designed in such a way, in my opinion, that you can't play all 16 cities yourself and have a really efficient time with it is because they want people to play online and play together. And the reason that the cities are smaller is because of the region mechanic. It's because they, they w didn't want one big city, they wanted s several smaller cities that interact with each other and have to specialize and work within a region. And they wanted that because that's the way that you get people to play multiplayer, because they can't build these gigantic cities that can do everything themselves. So that's why all of that is there. 
Now, the weird thing about the glass box simulation stuff that you were talking about is that apparently a lot of this is actually processed on the server side and not on your machine. I don't know how true this is. Like, this is something they've said in reviews. They've said, oh, this is a lot of the simulation so complicated that we have to process it on our servers and send it to you. I was like, well, that seems unlikely. But if we are to roll with their claim, then a lot of this really complex stuff that we're seeing right here, a lot of these calculations are being made on a server farm somewhere else, and then they're being sent to us. So it's allowing you to run more complex simulations on a machine that's not necessarily up to scratch. And indeed, in a recent interview, they said, we want this to run on your dad's PC, not just yours. I think a lot of sim games kind of, you know, fit that bill a while back, though. Do you agree, disagree? To some degree. I don't think they were as complex a simulation as this. I think if you can... if you. <laughs> I just got disconnected from the server. I'm sorry. Oh, well, really? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, th there's a prime example of the DRM in action, right? Yeah, you were looking at a city, but it's not letting you do that anymore. Well, you can get on there for a second. Mine, thankfully, did not DC. Although it would be great for the video if it had. Give it a minute. It, it might yeah. happen. It happened it, the other day to Chris, and then about a minute later, it happened to me. Uh, it could. It very well could. It would be kind of beautiful if we could show that. But It actually tells me that I can't load it at this time, so I'm going to have to quit the game and yeah, try Yeah, quit to... the game go back in. Yeah. Bear in mind, though, we're still t this is still beta, but this is press beta, so it's pretty close to final version. It's probably not the final version you're going to be getting, though, so this is still not necessarily a complete game. Anyway, the, I think this, the simulation detail is by far superior to pretty much any game I've played. Like, just the way that things flow, even the way traffic works, seems like, aside from the ridiculous bus situation, I think I just made too much public transport. <laughs> and it's like, there's buses everywhere! Are you sure there's you just didn't place your stops too close together? A lot of people uh, do that. Yeah, I might have done that, actually. So That's... many people do that. Like, Sims will actually walk quite a way on their own, just like in real life. People will actually walk Yeah, if Yeah, if we go to mass transit, we can show you. I wanted coverage everywhere. So you can see all these little blue things are my spots. And you can but have coverage everywhere. I mean, that's fine. It's just, you know, if you build them on the same side of the street or, you know, you know, do build them like kind of too close together. It's like, oh, what Maybe. are you doing? I got to say, though, there's barely any cars in my city. Pretty much everyone uses the bus or the streetcars. <laughs> it's like, look how efficient and clean my city is. I am green as hell right here. <laughs> But you'll notice that when you click the mass transit, you go to bus stop. It suddenly kind of, every time you do this, it changes the interface to show you some useful information. So if I'm moving up and down this, this is, go this is the range that's going to be serviced by this bus stop. So currently I actually have a set of these houses here, which are not serviced by bus. Now they are, because I've just put it there. So you see it's all gone green. I've got bus coverage everywhere. And so the, I'm so happy. It's about to be rush hour, and there's going to be, like, no cars. <laughs> My city is ridiculous like that. Just there's, a line of buses that kind of follow each other pretty much. like a, a, a big convoy. <laughs> yeah, there's, the, there's a bunch of commuters now coming back, I think, from your city, maybe, because I think some of the guys commuted out to that. So you can see the rush hour traffic's kind of coming in off the highway here. So the main avenue is going to get a little bit congested, but not by much because the streetcars and the buses are going to service everything else. And obviously when it becomes five o'clock, you would think anyway, I'm not sure. Yeah, if people are actually returning home. You can even see that happening there. So yeah. the simulation is a complex one. Very Although complex. There, there are flaws, though. Okay. I mean, there are times where you build a police station and there are criminals everywhere, but yet the cop cars follow each other yes. all around so instead of spreading yeah. out and going after different criminals and apprehending these people no the cops follow each other they all go line. to the same place yeah. they'll go to the same place all the fire trucks sometimes that's a pretty big simulation in real life though right you know, i think that, i think it's a bug though you know yeah, I, i'm not mostly. sure if if that will be you know what we see in the final version but it has I been i hope not yeah it, it was kind of frustrating. So my city was ridden with crime, and I built three police stations, and it still wasn't enough. And I had a precinct in there as oh, well, yeah. and that's like more upgraded. Yeah, <laughs> it was costing me a fortune, and mm -hmm. crime was still at large. Yeah, we can tell. We can tell. We can actually talk about modules here. This is weird. This the visuals are just bugged out, so like it's kind of clipped into the terrain here. Once again, beta is beta. But what you can do in SimCity, which is something you couldn't do previously, is you can upgrade existing buildings. Their logic behind this is they didn't want you building fifty police stations or having twenty hospitals in a city because that's just stupid. They wanted you to be able to have one that was more centralized, and you could then upgrade to your needs. So this, for instance, I. 
I can upgrade. I can add additional police cars. So there we go. Put an additional patrol car in there. I can add additional jail cells. I can even put a signpost and a flagpole if I like, which are completely useless, but they're nice cosmetically. So I've now upgraded my police station and it should now respond better to crime. It's got more patrol cars available, so this should be reducing crime better. And I should also be rehabilitating my prisoners, which will help the overall crime rate and make people happier. So you can upgrade almost anything, really, in a pr sometimes a pretty extreme way, like my wind power plant. All of these wind turbines, I put them there. This is not cosmetic. So if I go in here, you'll notice I have nine wind turbines, and I chose where to put them. Yeah? Uh, these turbines have to be connected, I believe, by a service road, which I can then build. So let's say I want to extend my service road. There we go. So now I want to build another big wind turbine. I can. Yeah? And that's where I'll put it. So I have the ability to control all of this, although it has to snap onto certain points. So there are certain buildings that have these little... In fact, I think I can show you that again here by going back to the police station. If I were to put a, another patrol car in, these are the slots so I could put it. But the problem is if I take these slots, then I... Actually, never mind. That's In this case, that's not the case. But in, in some cases, that you have limited slots and you've got to choose what to put there. Yeah? In the case of the police station, the cars don't overlap with the rest of it. But I can't put additional jail cells on this police station because I put it in a stupid place. And all of the points where it would clip onto are, well, they're in the sea. So that's not really that helpful. Oh, there you go. I almost thought that that was a sculpture of a donut right there. I should probably move that <laughs> sculpture garden. Then I could actually add jail cells. Yeah, that would be a, a nice police state that we've got here. Still too much crime. Uh, all right, well, we'll add more patrol cars then, and we'll, we'll make things more efficient. Anyway, yeah, that was a bit of a sidetrack going on there. The... <laughs> So I think we've kind of said all there is to be said on the always on DRM thing though, right? It's it's very redundant and pretty much just repeating what everyone said previously to say always on DRM for a single player game is really stupid. If you consider it as solely a single player game, then sure. Yeah, but, that's the thing is they don't do. do it. They don't though, do they? Even well, though it still is. I wouldn't consider this to be a single player game as I would have SimCity 4 or any of the previous SimCity games. SimCity used to be something that I would do if the power, like not the power, but like my internet was out. You yeah, know, if my internet exactly. was out, I would you know, throw in SimCity and, and I would, you know, have a great time doing that until my electricity, well, not electricity. Why do I keep thinking electricity? I've been playing with too much SimCity building power plants. But, um, yeah, that's the one thing you don't have. You don't have to hook up the internet in these cities. Yeah, that's true. That's if not it's, real. It's not real. We are real. protesting <laughs> because we have Time Warner Cable. It's like, <laughs> uh, wouldn't, wouldn't be they surprised. No People are always either. protesting in my city. They, they have just no like, cable. Yeah. Minions demand cable. <laughs> Whatever the case, it's always on DRM and a single player game is dumb. Why is it here? There's probably a few reasons. Yeah. One, anti-piracy. And you might think, oh, that'll be cracked in a day. Hell no, it won't. Like, the, if what they're saying is true, and there's a lot of stuff running server-side, calculations and parts of the game, it is going to take a long time for anyone to manage to pirate this thing. So it, this kind of DRM, unfortunately, as much as I would like to say otherwise, because it's anti-consumer as hell, is effective. Uh, it works. So that can, that can be a real problem, but that, that's just the way of things. And you can make excuses and say, oh, well, you need this because this, this, and this. And we've heard this all before. We heard it from Diablo, right? This is the same thing with Diablo 3. Uh, traditionally, a game that a lot of people played in single player. A lot of people. You might think, well, no one played it single player. Yeah, they did. The majority of people did. did. Most people never even went on Battle.net. They played single player because it was fun. Or they played LAN with their friends. Eh? They never went on Bnet at all in order to do this stuff. SimCity, very much the same way. And... Yeah, this should be something that if, the, if that's a problem for you, you have unstable internet or you're not happy with the possibility that when this game launched, we might get another Era 37 because it's entirely possible. This is working right now because there's like 40 people on the press beta, right? What happens when 3 million people bum rush the servers on Tuesday? Do they stay up? Probably not. Most launches like this don't. Are they ready for that? Are we ready for downtimes, instability, the inability to play our games when we want to play them because we're arbitrarily linked into a server now? Are we okay with that? Some people aren't. Well, if you look at it from the perspective that, you know, EA would not be the first company to do this in a game like this, Anno 2070. 
had to be online. That had that's use, true. I think use, they've Ubisoft. actually fixed that now. That that was Ubisoft. Really? Yeah. Really? Because uh -oh. I, I uh -oh. the last time that I tried it, I still had to be signed into UPlay and everything. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but my nuclear power plant is about to go critical and explode. Um. Great. Apparently, because I don't have enough educated workers, trying to run a nuclear power plant based on a number of country <laughs> yokels was a You've terrible got idea. you Simpson running your power plant. <laughs> Worker education level unsafe, meltdown imminent. Can I just demolish this thing? <laughs> Please don't. Uh-oh. That's, that's not good. Okay, so before the game logged me out, um, I had plopped down a university and I was beginning to ramp up my education. The server disconnected me, mm -hmm. and now my university is no longer here. However, the money that I used to buy the university is gone. Is gone. Um, this has been happening so, in the beta since I've been playing it, so I'm, I'm hoping that this is resolved before launch. So I, I, don't, I don't want to alarm you, but you know the problem we were having with the pollution floating in the direction of your city? Aww. So you know the nuclear fallout? <sighs> yeah. There's blue sparkly smoke heading in the direction of your city. That's probably not good, right? I hate you so much right now. <laughs> it's not my fault. Cletus didn't know how to run the power plant. <laughs> I couldn't afford education in my city. They all went to your place. It's your fault. They all went to your oh. schools. Your oh. schools failed. My schools are great. I don't know what you're talking about. The nuclear power plant recently had a meltdown, but it's okay now, I guess. Oh, but it's dear. okay now. No, what? I lost a reactor. This is pretty bad. You have a university. Oh, you had a university. I was going to say, I, I could get like some cleaner, more, less terrible reactors. But I guess building the nuclear plant was probably a dumb idea. I didn't actually need it. And now my city is nuclear. <laughs> it's a bit <laughs> radioactive, just a smidge. I built a department of education just for you, and I'm oh, going to redo my university in a moment. That's very kind so hopefully, of you. this won't be a problem for you in future. Well, we have still got blue smoke going on here, so <laughs> that's not good. It's so that that's how ex this is how advanced the simulation is, guys. It takes into account the education level of your city and whether or not they should be operating complex machinery. Yeah, that's that's kind of crazy. Sorry for the nuclear fallout, dear. I, you know, I, I am so resisting making a really bad Chernobyl joke right now. So let's <laughs> just move Classy. on. Classy. Yeah. Let's move on. Yeah, let's do that. Should we move on to the third bugbear? Glorious bees dump volunteers to take some of the cake is lies trash. Uh-huh. <laughs> My guys are kind, man. They're totally cool. I'm going to move to a city that doesn't have nuclear fallout. There we go. We'll just leave that one. That's fine. So the the third bugbear is the because this is building on what we we're talking about before. The third bugbear is that based on all of this stuff, we can deduce that this online service system was designed for one specific thing: to sell you lots of DLC, and that has already been proven in the pre-order bonuses. So the pre-order bonuses for this game have. Let's see. The Stuff that the regular game doesn't have. Yeah, pretty of much. Course. So, Hero and Villain Lair, which will apparently be available to buy if you don't get the limited edition. So, Hero and Villain Lair, which was day one DLC, involves new disasters, basically a super villain thing in your city, and you can also build a superhero base, which can help you tackle crime, and so on and so forth. The limited edition of the game comes with three different city sets, which are, I think, English, German, and French, and they all come with unique buildings. English comes with a double-decker bus station, and then there's a high-speed train, I think, for Germany, and I believe there are baguettes for France. <laughs> Something like that. So, and so uh, you can apparently build... There. <laughs> I guess you can build stuff like the Eiffel Tower, Arc de Triomphe. I know it's the Brandenburg Gate, Big Ben, and the Eiffel Tower, I think, you can build, which are big tourist attractions. Yeah, These but there are already the tourist attractions in the game, so I just don't understand why you, you know, need to sell, like... Well, I know why they would sell. Uh, those I know exactly why. Ones. Yeah. Yeah, iconic because you know uh -huh. any any person who's played sim games on you know a more serious level, they've created. I mean, that was kind of like how I got into sim games to begin with. And during my drafting class in high school, we were made to use Sim City to basically develop a a city, and you had to pick a city that actually existed and duplicate that in the Sim City game. 
And, you know, that was actually a really, really fun project. Uh -huh. Yeah, I imagine it was. Now, I'm looking at culture right now. You can build all this stuff anyway. I think actually the, the major landmarks are the, maybe the least important part because... It's you an can aesthetic build, thing, I think. Well, you can build a lot of these major landmarks. Yeah, yeah. There's already a lot that's available, like St. Basil's Cathedral is here, Stockholm City Hall, Tokyo Tower, the what the hell that thing is, the Polish <laughs> bollocks, Washington Monument, and so on and so forth. The Leaning Tower of Pisa, you can build all that stuff. So that's really not that important. As you were saying, it's a bit aesthetic. There's stuff like the double-decker bus station, high-speed rail and things like that. Now, that is useful. Yeah, so and they're selling that for an additional $20. So you're talking about like an $80 game at that point. So there is a lot of evidence that they will have a lot of DLC in this game and they are very much treating this game as an always on service product by which they will then hopefully milk hundreds of dollars out of you as they eventually drip feed release buildings over the course of a number of years. Wow, that's when the, you say it that way. <laughs> that's the third. Well, the funny thing is that I've been thinking about that. And for me, like for a game that I already enjoyed, that's almost kind of good. Yeah, but that's assuming that like every game had infinite money and didn't really care yeah. about spending five dollars for a different building or whatever. The <laughs> fact that there would be a constant stream of DLC to me is kind of attractive because I know I'll be playing the game for a longer time because they keep adding new stuff to it. The downside is I'm going to have to pay for that privilege. So yeah. do I want to drop, say, let's say they release one thing a week for five bucks. Do I want to drop 20 bucks a month, maybe 25 on longer months in order to actually access all of that new content? Do I want to do that? <laughs> good question. No, that's a good question. I still have crime problems over here. This sucks. I probably need another police station. Do you build a police precinct, by the way? Or I haven't done built yet? one yet because I um I just added on my Department of Education, and you know those additional buildings yeah, onto your city hall cost true. quite a bit. Yeah, you can you can specialize your town hall. By the way, in this case, this is just my town hall. But once you get a city hall, you can build various departments, which will unlock different buildings depending on what you feel you need to get. And these are actually region wide. So if you have someone that has a department of education, you have access to build that stuff. So if I wanted to go to where's education? There we go. I already no. have one, so don't build one. You're already That's... benefiting from it. Uh, could not go to this. I'm not actually. The, so, um, According to this, there's no Department of Education in the region. There is, because I built weird. one. <laughs> um, ah. Are you able to create the high school or the university? Because that's what it would have unlocked. Uh, community college, I can't build the university, and I can't build the high school. All right, then there is a... I'm not sure if this is a bug. Chris and I ran into this the other day, um, where you... Ha what we kind of established as our theory is that you have to have two cities that are right next to each other that do have a connecting road or some mode of public well, transport. We do. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure because I haven't looked in the region view to see if my highway goes all the way direct into your city. Okay. Yep. Then, yeah, then I'm not really sure. Maybe it's um, an issue with the server not syncing properly. Yeah, because you did DC, city. didn't you? So yeah. that's probably something so. to do with it. But yeah, it is hard there, to say. I promise. So build something else. Build um build the utilities one or something. Actually, don't we already have that one? Let me check. I'm trying to think what Yeah, what we you've have got. that one already. You must have built that one. Yeah, um, I've got I've got those running. Oh, in build the my public place. safety one. The one where we can get the precinct and the upgraded fire station and um the upgraded, sure, I can't really uh, do that hospital. on my little city yet. It won't let me do that. But I'm actually oh. noticing that it gives me access to the bus terminal. This requires a Department of Transportation. So it clearly works, but only sometimes. So, <laughs> yeah, it, that's a bit weird. But there you go. Anyway, so, yeah, th those are the three major bugbears. That's probably... That's maybe all of my problems with SimCity before we get on to... You know, we've kind of peppered this with good stuff as well, but before we really get on to the good meat of the game, is there anything else that you personally really don't like about the game that could be, you could perceive to be a problem? Um, I don't like that things are not as precise as they have been in previous Sim games. In what like, way? When you throw down, for example, a, a trade... Uh, depot. Okay. Or actually, let me. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it is a trade depot. I I like to get the names correct because there's just so many buildings yeah, I'm here. Just gonna, I'm just um, gonna jump into my other city and show you a trade depot. When you throw down a trade depot, there are add-ons that you need to add on. Yes. To the building in order mm -hmm. for it to function yep. up to its you know highest capacity. Yep. And they will show you the white lines 
where you can place your building and they'll show you red lines that if you go over to a certain point, you know, the red line indicates that you won't be able to expand that side. Yep. Looks however, something like this. Mm. However, some buildings you can expand to the full capacity on the other side. Uh, an example of this, I guess, would be the solar power plant. You can actually take that solar power plant, plop it down on one side of your map, and build each additional solar panel one right behind the other one. And if I you... don't mean to alarm you, but my plant just melted down again. <sighs> you are the worst city planner ever. It was fine earlier. <sighs> you are a disaster. Quite literally. I'm just, there, might, there may be mutants, just saying. <laughs> there anyway. might be giants. There, there could be those two. <laughs> They're probably less good. But yeah, yeah no, that's it's interesting that you mentioned that because the way it's something you kind of just have to learn. The game doesn't really tell you this all that well. As you said with the solar power plant, you kind of extend it all the way across the map because one panel then attaches to another panel, attaches to another panel. It doesn't indicate that at all when you originally place it. Yep. It, it just seems to me like something you kind of need to learn and maybe they're just trying desperately to communicate all that information to you but they don't necessarily manage to do it properly and there's every now and again there's a little moment where you will run into that issue yeah. where something is the game doesn't quite communicate it and it's just something you have to learn by practice so yeah you're gonna screw up your cities there's a bunch of stuff in this city that i completely messed up that i can't really fix now without demolishing huge areas of it i've got wonky streets everywhere this this is the offending thing this annoyed everyone on my stream here whereby there's just this this road at an angle and then some of my roads are slightly crooked and things like that but yeah it's it happens it it, it happens. That's just, that's just the way of it. So, yeah, you're right. The, the game doesn't necessarily do a great job of communicating everything. It seems a bit fiddly as well in some ways. Like, if you want all of your maps, there's a lot of different data maps, but this big panel here is totally unhelpful. It's like, there's like 50 options here. I don't know what half of this stuff is. What's this? I mean, apparently that's wind map. I don't know what... looks like a four-leaf clover. That looks like a... I, is it a hot dog? I don't know, but... One way or the what? other, you can access these <laughs> what data maps here. Talking about the the all data maps. Yeah, pretty much. I, I Not, think those are fine. I, once I, you learn them, they are sure. What, yeah. I mean, you've been playing for ages, so I guess that happens. Ages, you know, you can't. Yeah, I have not played in. I have not played this game since the beta was released. So you can't, you can't build me up like that because that's not true. I've only been playing for what a a week. Mm -hmm. It's safe to say, like one week, and and. This is where my knowledge level is at. So don't don't make it sound like Let's oh my god. Let's be honest, gosh, you did I turn yourself into a hermit expert. inside your bedroom for a while. So <laughs> yeah, but I'm like no no SimCity expert by any means, and I'm I'm not like the best SimCity player ever. So I'm just saying, don't don't build me up like that because I'm wrong very frequently. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, w whatever the case, the it's like they have attached a lot of the information to actually clicking on the building so if i if i go to my water panel here it will then open up some information about water and automatically display the water map as well as give me the advisor in the corner if i want to know about power the best way to do that is to actually click on the power button here now some people won't like the way this was presented it did take me quite a bit of getting used to but i think i've now gotten the vibe of it i understand where where they're going with it so you know, we've talked a lot about the different issues that the game's got. Let's talk about what's good. And we've touched upon that every now and again. I mean, the simulation aspect of it is probably one of the best. And what I'd also say is level of detail and the idea of supply chains. I think that the notion of trade and the notion of all sorts of crazy stuff going on in the region itself is a huge factor in making the game fun. Agreed. Yeah, it gives so. it more of an actual purpose instead of here. Let's see if you can put tiles together. Yeah, pretty much. It, I, I've always liked supply chains and trading and things like that. And the fact that SimCity games really didn't do that all that well. You know, they simulated it to some degree, but not nowhere near as much as the way that this one does. And there's a lot of focus on that. So that's good. It also just seems like there's there's a lot of layers of complexity to this game. But they've also streamlined the stuff that kind of sucked, like piping, for instance. Oh gosh, I'm so, I'm I'm actually so uh, okay. I'm kind of torn on this one actually. Okay. I, I I used to hate having to throw down all of my water pipes and everything all over, 
you know, underground and everything, because sometimes it would get kind of confusing. You'd get lost in the tile sometimes. And yeah. It, you know, the graphic actually wouldn't appear, and that would be really confusing. But, you know, there is a, a certain enjoyment to the fact that, you know, hey, I started with this ridiculously blank sheet of paper, and I put everything there. You know, yeah. everything. You know, all the little bits and bobs. This city works because I did that. Not yes. because, oh, hey, while the construction crews were out there building my roads, they also decided to uh, dig the sewage pipes. They, you know, dug all of the water pipes. And, you know, and they also strung the power lines that no longer exist. <laughs> so, you know, there, there, there is, you know, a certain mourning, I guess, for that. I, I okay. think that a lot of people will be happy that, that that's no longer a thing. Though, so yeah that level of micromanagement was not something that i really liked i, I if i'm <laughs> I totally think honest you would for some reason no i i'm not a very well organized person no. i i'm dyspraxic as most people know this really affects my organizational skills which causes me a lot of problems especially in games like this but i i enjoy them anyway so to that to be gotten rid of and power lines basically they all run along roads now so it, it's fairly logical the way that it's actually set up it's pretty much all underground and it's set up in that particular regard also i think probably the reason my nuclear plant melted down was because i didn't have enough water in my city to cool the reactors that's now been resolved so <laughs> i shouldn't be killing any more of your citizens now it'll be Yay, fine uh, thanks <laughs> anytime I'm a, I'm a considerate global citizen and so on and so forth i have a, a lot of abandoned stuff going on here my city's kind of going to hell at the moment lord there's a, there's a lot of a lot of rubble here a lot of damage was done to my city at one point i think a ufo hit it at some point so that's probably why but we can clean a lot of this out that and the fact that they're complaining about rent it's like come on guys really why did you move in if you couldn't afford it you irresponsible bastards there we go. There have only oh. been musicals made about the fact, you know. <laughs> Indeed. That is true. The level of simulation seems pretty incredible. It's it's on a really awesome, awesome... Awesome? Yes. <laughs> I was about to say the level of simulation is on a really awesome level and then just realized how stupid it was. I was looking for a different synonym and I couldn't find it. I'm like, <laughs> well, crap. <laughs> Graphically, the game is very impressive, even if when you zoom in, it does get a bit blurry. Uh, I don't know if this is beta only, but it's probably not. It's probably just a case of, look, we have hundreds and thousands of buildings and people running around everywhere. You've got to make some compromises somewhere. Yeah. So this is a bit blurry, which is actually like all the other Sim games. When you zoomed in, it was always a bit blurry. Yeah, the people didn't matter. No. <laughs> Although here you can actually see the people and see yeah. the cars and... It's a false sense of uh, of comfort in a way. It's like, oh, well, there's, you know, this person. I'll never see them again because my city's so populated by all these things. But I'm glad I got to see that sim today. Well, yeah, you, you can follow them around. I know that for yeah, a fact. I do, you can't mark them can't, or anything. You can't, like, track them forever. Yeah, anything. I want to know what Daniel Thomas is doing. Yeah, he's heading home from the office right now, apparently. It's so. like, I want to know about his life. What's his story? He's got like, money. <laughs> There's also apparently a traffic jam caused by a garbage truck in the middle of my town, but he's nice. going to cross the road now. And for, he'd clip it through a bunch of... Yeah, again, it's a simulation game. It's you, Truman is what it is. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You can't necessarily expect a mat in it with a game with this massive amount of detail to do stuff like, oh, yeah, let's not have the pedestrians clip through cars when they're passing. Like, come on, you know. There's only so far you can really go with the sim simulation, I think. Oh, jeez, my gridlock in the center of the city. That's bad. I'm going to have to wonder what I can do about that. It's mostly because of Hourly Building Incorporated, which is the biggest building in my entire city. I'm pretty sure it's generating all of this traffic. Do we not have a bus here? Maybe I just screwed my public transport up. Maybe I just don't have enough bus stations. Oh, bus coverage is looking good. It's just there's just massive gridlock in the center of my city. All right, I'll have to work on that later. Anyway, what else is good about it? Like... User friendliness, once you get past some of the initial quirks, it's pretty easy to build stuff. Building roads now is much easier than it used to be because you have a lot of different options. So if I want to build a square, there we go. Done. Or I could build a straight road. I could build a slightly wonky road at a different angle. It's not perfectly straight, though. The straight road thing is a bit of a lie. That's true, actually. Yeah, they can they still put it off slightly at an angle sometimes. Which is well, mostly to do with the terrain. They just give you flexibility. That's what yeah. it's for. It's because you can make 
roads in a curvature and you know yes. you want to be able to make those straight thoroughfares as well yeah you can do a completely circular road if you want you can yeah. have something that kind of looks like that and chris's city that we saw earlier does have that it does. You know, he, it's he's a, got it built around it's quite an interesting concept. It, yep. it makes things a bit difficult, though, when you're zoning your commercial because your residential people, they need to go through the commercial zone so that way they go through the shopping areas yeah. in order to get to their industrial jobs. Otherwise, they're not very happy. Pretty much, yeah. So it's, it's a challenge, certainly. The fact that you can do circular roads is definitely pretty cool. And... The road design is generally pretty good, but as you said, there are. It is kind of a lie at times because it says, "Oh, this is straight," and it really doesn't end up being. It's really yeah. bad for me because again, I have a perception problem. I I can't see whether or not something is straight or at an angle or anything. I just can't. You know, it's yeah. again a problem that I have. But I mean, if you're it, OCD like me, there is, there are actual like guides. You know that did did all. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, you can totally use the you. guidelines. The, yeah. The, occasionally they'll pop up sort of guidelines for you that say, "Hey, this is going to be a straight line," which is pretty good. But aside from that, road design is a lot more flexible than I've seen in previous titles. Yeah, there's a lot you can do a lot with it. I am disappointed that there is no underground. Yeah, that's kind of weird. I was surprised by that. The so they've gone for overground system this time. They've gone for streetcars as the replacement for that. Which I so don't really. You, I, I understand kind of like why, but at the same time, I don't understand why that is the highest density option. It's like you wouldn't make an entire city, including the suburbs. I mean, I guess you wouldn't be upgrading the suburb streets anyway. Um, with you no, know, so it takes too much space. But based on on city size as it is, you know, a lot of times you are looking for that high density. So the highest that you'd be able to get would probably be, you know, just a high density what is it, avenue. Yeah, Maybe you can do high, high density, density avenue street. or you can do high density avenue with streetcar. Yeah? yeah. Which is more expensive. They're the same thing, but one supports. One is like three times bigger. Yeah, the, the high density with streetcar avenue, I believe, is bigger. And, and you have space to add is stops. at a premium. And you have to yes. add a station. Yeah, which takes up space too. But you can use it to alleviate a lot of your your problems there. I mean, you might ask, well, why don't you just build everything with the highest density? You can't, because it takes up too much space. If I made everything with avenues. I suppose it, there's a you possible can. design. I've done it. Yeah. You, you can do it. It takes but, a lot of space, though. Well, it's not so much the space because at that point, you know, the transportation is so good that everybody's happy. So most of the people are rich, but then you start to lose workers. And, you know, so. Yeah, you don't have people that can work like low, the low end jobs, yeah, which is actually very jobs. much a thing, you know. It is a thing. So, yeah, that's how the simulation goes to that level. I mean, we were talking about the education level of these guys earlier with the nuclear power plant. Yeah. And the same thing happens when, oh, you want a bunch of kind of cheaper commercial stuff because not everyone buys Prada. Well, where are you going to get those people from? Because everyone in your city buys Prada and doesn't want to work at a Prada store, you know, or whatever. <laughs> so you have problems like basically no one will go work at the donut shop. So you get your lower rent commercial stuff shutting down. And then you get people like, oh, I need somewhere to shop and I can't do that. Uh, this city has a problem of very high land value. And I've got a lot of people moving out because they can't afford the rent. Like these guys, the Quigley residents, they can't afford the cost of this place, apparently. So it's just like, you know. here, let me go build the ghetto. So that way you have somewhere to live. That that, that just seems so wrong to have to resort to that. Mm, you kind of do, though. You know, and that, That's how it is. So build something next Suburbs. to your sewage processing plant. That usually works pretty well. <laughs> Come live next to my nuclear power plant. It may shorten your lifespan, but yeah, it's cheap rent. Everything's good. <laughs> live in the middle of my industrial zone or anything. I actually do have some stuff. You'll notice, like, these are my crappy apartments. They're right next to my industrial zones. So these guys are pretty happy, actually, being right next to the industry because these are cheap. They do get sick quite often, though, so That's I need more health care because they provisions. don't have schooling. If you actually send your sims to school, they, uh, they get sick less. So if you have a good school system, they don't get sick as often. Interesting. So you I educate them as to whether clinic. or not they should drink bleach. Have, have a look at my city. I only have one clinic servicing the entire city, and people should be sick. People should be sick with the amount of industry that I have, even though it's cleaner industry than what a lot of the other cities have. But there is no reason why not every sim should be sick, because I have played other sims of this where I didn't build a university and everybody's sick. I'm building like two and three hospitals by now and all I have is one clinic and everybody's fine. I mean, well, I'm sure there will be lucky. some people that are sick, but they're not complaining about it. They're not protesting about yep. it. 
Kind I'm not getting the indicator all that it's a problem. All these perfect squares all over the place. I'm it's sorry. A, it's such a square, <laughs> man. Look at this. It's like a patchwork quilt. It's America. Yeah, pretty America. much. I, I go down the British design philosophy, which is put stuff everywhere and see what <laughs> happens. Seems to work pretty well. As in, we had no room for this. Our our, our country is much older. Yeah, something along <laughs> no those room, lines. No room, no room. Yeah, it's interesting. You can even like see the detail, although it blurs it greatly on the outside there. So, which is very much like the previous SimCity games. What a, what else is really really good about it? I mean, we we've talked a lot about the way the multiplayer kind of sucks, but we haven't talked so much about how it doesn't. Like the way that the interaction runs between two different cities, and that you could just visit another person's city at will and check out what's going on there. There is a sense of community that comes from getting your friends into a region and then building a bunch of stuff and saying, oh, well, I'll do the gambling city. And then suddenly, because there's a gambling city in the region, there's tons of crime. It's like, God damn it, sort your crime out. And you kind of, you still do work together. And the great works thing allows you to work towards something. Yeah, but I'm going to maintain just, uh, you know, for the sake of playing the devil's advocate, because I have played... Well, you don't really play the devil's advocate because you actually believe this, right? I do in a way, but... Having played as many multiplayer sessions with Chris, I mean, I we sat down and we tried. We tried to enjoy the multiplayer experience and, you know, found a region. And we actually had it unlocked so strangers could come and set up their own city. Mm -hmm. And basically, we just felt like they were screwing us over. So, you know, they had criminals coming into our town. They were lighting fires to our homes. You know, it was just ridiculous. We were running our cities proper and these other people were messing about. So, Well, that's why you have a private region. Yeah, so we went and we did a private region. But at that point, you know, we're like, okay, well, you know... I'm going to build the casino town. Why don't you go build, you know, the oil town? And, you know, every region or well, every city, you know, has a, its own list of resources. And yet I don't think you really get into how you really want to structure your city until you know the exact layout. You don't get to know where all of your resources are located in that actual city until you pick it. You know how much there is of something, but you don't know where it's located. It might not be in an ideal situation for you to throw down a ton of residential. You I could, had some problems with that. You it's, could, yeah. I think the way, the best way to do that, and I'm going to test this by going into another city here, it may be that you can't do what I think you can do, but I believe there is a way before you start building stuff but you've got to be careful to check it before you start building well, stuff. Well, no, sure, you can. You can look once you have claimed the city. But that's yes. the thing, though, is that if you if you have your heart set that this is the city that I'm going to pick because it has the most oil, that this is what's going to supply oil to everybody else in the mm -hmm. region. Yep. And that is what you have decided, and you picked that town specifically for that purpose, but you found out that... The oh, we, no, you, you can't, actually. Yeah, there's... Yeah. Well, you, you can... But it gets a bit awkward. So you just know how much there is, and that's yeah, it. it. If you go straight into a new city and you, the you only check the is, layer. It, yeah, c can you check the layer without actually having anything else? Yeah, yeah. You go to the um, all layers, and then oh, there, on, there we go. There's the all map. Click okay. on the resources. Yeah. yeah. So there we can see it. I was yeah. going to say because it usually displays it when you click the building, but it's not letting me click the building. Yeah, but, but I mean, I don't really see that necessarily as a problem, but... I see I, it as a problem if you're playing, like, a three-city region. Let's say you and two friends have decided to... Oh, yeah, 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 totally. So there's, to... like, maybe one region that's only got the coal, and then the yeah. coal's in a really awkward place, so your ideas for the city are like, well, can't do that. Your residential at that point could be screwed. You could have, like, really low population relying on the other cities to... The to provide that for you, but you have dreams of making huge towering apartment skyscrapers. And if you don't achieve that, then what's the point of playing the game? Mm, you know, yeah. it, I can, I can kind of see your problem here, uh, your point here, because I mean, for instance, this area right here has coal right in the center. It's like, that would be really nice if it was off in the corner, you know, because <laughs> yeah. and not in a really awkward spot. And yeah, I can, I can see that. I can see that. But I think that's only going to be a problem for some people, certainly. For people who are OCD of it, sure. For people who are, uh -huh. you know, trying just to, you know, play something casual with their friends and enjoy the multiplayer aspect, I don't think they'll have too much of a problem with it. But mm -hmm. I, I think you, you either need to play on an open region with a lot of strangers and hopefully you guys can all work together towards some sort of common goal or, you know, maybe you just make the most awesome town and you just go around, you know, looking at their town saying, man, I'm just so much better than they are. You could be all up 
city in your region or something. I don't know, but yeah. So that Department of Education's finally kicked in, by the oh, way. Oh, good. It just good. gave me a message. <laughs> it's like you built that like what an hour ago. I <laughs> so did. I did. That's you can, weird. You can it's stop, like, you know, blowing up your power plant and things now. I hope. Maybe I don't think I can fit a university in my city. Maybe I can. You don't put need it one because all your Sims are coming here to get schooled in my region anyway. Well, well it's not working that well because my nuclear power plant's still blowing up. What's wrong with your school system? Hmm? There's nothing wrong with my school system. They're not complaining at all. I even built dormitories. Maybe they came and just lived in my city, and they're not going to go back to your crappy. They're city. going to Kegas, bro. <laughs> they're just blazing it. That's all it is. Uh, yeah, so there's that. The, I think, you know, if you were to go on further about the whole interaction part of things, it almost seems like there's less working together and more trying to hope that your guys don't screw up enough in your region to cause you a bunch of problems. Like, if they have Kinda, a crime-ridden yeah. city, then that crime's going to spread to your city as well. Yep. Getting murderers, arsonists, and all sorts of things. My, you know, my nuclear fallout issue, for instance, or the pollution that's blowing in the direction of her city and so on and so forth. This is all stuff that affects the region negatively, but there's not a huge amount that affects it positively, at least that you have kind of direct control over. The notion that stuff commutes, like the commuters come to my city to shop or whatever, they do to some degree and then they don't. You know, they, I don't really have a huge amount of control over how many people come to my region to shop. And if even you if have you have leftover commercial, then you kind of do. Well, I mean, I've got a load of commercial here. Yeah, but, but if you have more commercial than me, then that's what's going to depend on that happening. Yeah, but then, as you say, is that screwing you over? Because <laughs> yeah. then when you build commercial, it's like, oh, we don't want to shop in your city. We want to go to shop in Glorious Bees because they've got way more stuff. Shopping in Glorious Bees. I'm sorry. Everyone but... should shop in Glorious Bees. <laughs> Everybody. Everyone. Basically, if you don't shop in Glorious Bees, I will send arsonists to your city. That's how it's going to be. Nice. <laughs> we have wonderful things like Ashby Mills Strip Mall, which is quality, <laughs> as you can see. Business quality, quite specifically. I have mid Costco. Spider House Coffee. <laughs> that, that's a snake. That's not a spider. What a bunch of liars. <laughs> God. Terrible. Yeah, uh, it's. I mean, it's hard. I, I'm, in I'm in two minds about the multiplayer as well, I, if I'm totally yeah. honest. It's. It's like it's nice that it's there, and I think there's so much potential for it, but I don't think they fully realize that potential. And because a lot of it you don't have a lot of control over, it almost seems like a hassle. But then there's not enough interactivity between the cities that you can really work together towards to really be a multiplayer game at all. It's more like you're playing single player, but you're connected in a multiplayer anyway, whether you want it or not. And then stuff that happens in this other guy's city affects you in some way. I, I still think that's a really cool idea. And I think that it's awesome that it's interconnected that way. But maybe they just did it a little bit too much. It's almost like, what if it was the Dark Souls method? Where the <laughs> multiplayer, you never had to actively participate in it. Yeah. It just kind of happened around you. Uh, it almost feels like that, but it's, it's a bit more direct because you have to kind of join a region. So it's essentially like a persistent lobby. I feel like a lot of people are just going to kind of ignore <laughs> the whole multiplayer like the little announcements like half the time i don't even look at them i mean the flavor text in in older sim cities was you know kind of cheesy comical stuff mm -hmm. and now yep. the flavor text isn't really even so much flavor so, text it's some just of it's like pretty funny it's just like you know hey this person is now doing this but it's not really comical in any way um you know it's just letting you know that this is the thing and this is what's happening it's just fact and you know i i don't know I, i'm really conflicted as to how to feel about that because to me even though i've been playing online multiplayer with you i've been playing online multiplayer with christian it kind of feels to me that i am still playing a single player game and eventually you know occasionally i just get screwed over that's like the only thing that that's how it feels for me having played this is because you know when i think of a multiplayer game i i think of oh hey you know let's go play like uh, an mmo where we're actually in a group together and we are accomplishing you know a common goal and sure you can you can go the whole you know oh well we have the great works you know obviously we're going to come together and accomplish that as a common goal but that's, but just that's about it, isn't it? <laughs> it's like, yeah, I mean, but it's it just doesn't feel the same. What it feels like is someone is actually going to build a city better. Someone is actually going to get better money. Well, not better money, just more of it. You know, they're going to be more efficient. Uh -huh. They might be better than you at the game. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to have all the money 
to purchase those great works and you will have done nothing to contribute. And then how will you feel? And this actually happened to me, by the way. Chris was off building airports and everything else. I think he built the arcology. And I'm like, oh, so you built a, a great work? Well, that's, you know, that's great. That's, that's kind of awesome. What did I do, you know? Nothing, yeah. Right. So there's it's, no... It's a, it's a weird meta multiplayer mode, isn't it? Yeah, and you you have to d define your own level of achievement in this game. <laughs> which, I mean, I guess you've already, always done in SimCity, but the problem is when you when you introduce more people, it then becomes a comparative thing. Right. Like, there's leaderboards and stuff everywhere. Yes. And you know what? I mean, this this actually goes back to an experience that you remember the experience we had with a certain little subreddit a couple of nights ago. <laughs> You know, I don't yeah. want to go too much into it, but this actually is the attitude that I think that it engenders in a lot of people because SimCity was never competitive. Yeah, it was a nice, relaxed kind of thing. You set your own think goals. Competitive you competitive was the modding scene. <laughs> yeah, yeah, def that's very true. Yeah, and, absolutely. And that's another thing. I I don't understand how that's going to work with well, this it's not. always there on are no thing. Mods. There's flat out, there is no modding. But there will game. be. No, how could there be? There will be. How how could there be? It's always um, on. They made a statement once upon a time, I can't remember when, but they did say that the game will support modding, but it won't be on launch. I don't see how. How the hell do they expect to pull that off? Well, I mean, keep in mind, like, The Sims, you know, as it is the game The Sims, it has a really, really huge modding community. Like, you yes. can make mods for people's bodies, like their hair. You can load you, you all can this stuff. You can make a lot of very twisted mods yeah, for Yeah, you could load all that into a sim loader. So if this is kind of based on the same sort of thing, which I don't know if it is, I, 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 I should have researched it, be. it better. But, Te you know. Technologically, it yeah. just seems so unlikely that they'd be able to do that. I, I don't know. But, you know, it's just, it's a concern because, you know, the people who have been around playing this game well the franchise for so long you know they're going to be thinking oh well i just spent x amount of years helping the modding community and develop that whole sense of purpose and now what am i going to do i'm going to play the game as it is with you know ea highlights well a more case of relying on ea actually green lighting dlc which you'll then pay for right it's it's if there was a statement saying there's going to be a modding community i cannot see how they could do it i just I'm cannot not sure. it's, if, you, really if, it's, if all sure. this stuff's server side and they're claiming there's calculations being made, how the hell does that relate to modding? Yeah. How could you run mods that way? I, maybe it's possible. I mean, Torchlight does it. You can run mods on lobbies in Torchlight, but I think this is a bit more advanced in that regard. I mean, it's, you it, mod so WoW. That's online. Yeah, but you don't mod the game. You mod the interface. True. So, you maybe. know, I, I could... Maybe, Maybe that's they kind just of the mean same thing. Mods. I mean, isn't that kind of the same thing in a way? I mean, if you think of your interface as just, you know, models, you know, how your computer loads a specific image. Well, if that's the know. case, you're just talking about cosmetic skinning and you're not talking about actual working Phys buildings. Yeah. I mean, yeah, maybe they just meant that. Maybe it's like, it's oh, possible. you can do skins. Which is like, okay, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, that's easy enough. With an always-on system, you can definitely do that because it's a cosmetic change that only you see. And then maybe if everyone has the same mod installed, they can all see it and so on and so forth. That's good. All right. So our conclusion on this. It is, in my opinion, a really, really good game. And I think that those kind of looking to basically take a dump on it and say this is a really terrible game and EA's ruined everything are just so horribly wrong. Because it, as a simulation, I think it excels. It does so many things very, very right. It gives you a lot of creativity. It gives you a lot of satisfaction. It's also a bit of a hog, by the way. They might have claimed, oh, I want this to run on my dad's PC. But the beta, <laughs> it's dropping no. below 30 frames per second on my machine when I zoom beta. in. But it's beta. Yeah, it is beta. It may very well be optimized in the full release. But just, just bear this in mind. If you've got everything turned up to maximum, which I do... This is going to hurt you. This is going to hit your CPU really, really hard. It's There's a lot going on. The frame rate drops. Uh, anything that drops below 30 FPS on my machine, you know it's a bit of a monster. <laughs> However, it's, it's a really, really awesome game. And I think people are going to have a lot of fun with it. But there are lurking concerns that may affect the future of the game. And uh, as you've pointed out, you know, this whole size thing is probably going to be a big sticking point for a lot of people. I mean, I hate to admit it, but in this case, size does matter. 
Well, you had to say it sometime, didn't you? I did. I was well, obligated. You, congratulations, you got like 90 minutes in before you were able to make that kind of joke. But there you go, that's that's, <laughs> that's, that's pretty much a record for you, actually. I, I wasn't it. actively seeking it out. Yeah, right. Yeah. No, I really wasn't. Yeah. I, I was trying not to even mention scale because I knew I'd go off on a rant about <laughs> it. And I, I don't like being ranty. It, it doesn't really help anything. God, I, I zoom into this element and it goes like down about 20 frames per second. It's because there's all these people. Yeah. Wow, 18 frames per second. Jeez, that's hardcore. <laughs> yeah, it's runs on your dad's PC. Yeah, if, if it happens to be a supercomputer, it might. Yeah. But say, I built that computer and it is not a piece of it's crap a by any means. Yeah, and it's it's slowing down. So there may be some optimization required. This has always been a problem with SimCity, though. Like, it's, SimCity's always been a. It seems like the kind of game that will run anything, but it can run slow, especially as SimCity 4 used to run slow if there was a lot of stuff going on and things like that. But yeah, th this size thing may probably be the biggest. Is that the biggest issue that you've got with it? Is that the the one thing that's like, if only this wasn't here, this would be a much better game? That and the illusion of the multiplayer. Illusion of multiplayer, yeah. There's, but a, there's this I'm, illusion I'm, of interaction that isn't really there. But I'm very conflicted about that because I do like some of the elements that have been implemented as far as like sharing resources, buying, selling resources. You know, oh, yeah, that's yeah, fun. Really good. And if you only had, you know, one, ch you know, one city that you were going to play forever and ever and ever, then that would be perfect. That would be mm -hmm. what it would be. But if you have played sim games before, you know that one city is just not, it's not enough. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's Not a tricky it's a one. It, <laughs> yeah, it's a. It's I think it's because they they tried some new things and it's always dangerous to do that with an established formula. A lot of those new things really work. Maybe some of them don't quite as work as well as we would like them to. And I think well, certainly what I see here is a really good game, a glorious simulation, mm -hmm. something that's extremely enjoyable to play, and. You just want it to be perfect. You do because it's like it feels like it's so close. Yeah. That's why it, it sucks to me <laughs> that there are yeah. any flaws with it at all. But you know what? You know, there's never going to be a flawless game, is there? And this is something that could be patched. This is something that could DLC expansions could fix. And it it seems to me like SimCity kind of has a bright future on the basis of this game. I think that's my opinion of it. And potentially. Or it could go horribly wrong. Who knows? But <laughs> You know, you basically just described the entire, you know, I guess if there was a plot to this game, <laughs> that would be it. You know, you try to make the perfect thing, it but could have it a could bright go future, Or it could wrong. go horribly wrong. Yeah. yeah. Sounds about right. When yeah. Godzilla shows up, it's all over. Yep. It's... SimCity is a complex game. It's it, there's going to be a lot more discussion on it over the next few weeks and months. There's going to be thesis written on this bloody thing. And even with a 90-minute you know, video, we can't really fit all of our opinions in. But well, that's also because we don't know everything. No, either. we don't. I'm, I'm sure yeah. there are several inaccuracies that, you know, we've Yeah, it's a complex game. Up. You can't know everything about it. It's, you know, you will eventually master it, but it's, it's tricky, especially considering that this is very much a press beta and we don't know what features will change before release. We don't know if there'll be any additional elements to it and so on and so forth. But it is still really, really good. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise, because they're liars. <laughs> they're, they're wrong. They're just straight up wrong. It's it's cool to hate on EA for some reason, you know. I remember it was cool to hate on Activision. You bloody whippersnappers can get the hell off my lawn, quite frankly. <laughs> I sung an entire song about how terrible Bobby Kotick is. I will not allow you to circumvent that. <laughs> All right, let's wrap it up. Jen, thank you very much for taking time to come on the show today. Thank you for having me. As always, you can go back to your city building now, and Yay. I will go back to mine. Ladies and gentlemen, my name has been Total Biscuit, and I shall see you next time.